It's the magic of math here, and today we're talking two-way tables, and we're going to determine if there's a relationship between students who did their homework and passed their math test, or did no homework and failed their math test. So we've collected bivariate data here, and here we go. Let's answer some questions. In this lesson, our objectives are that you will read and interpret two-way tables. You will also be able to calculate the probability or relative frequency of a given outcome using a two-way table. You will use data in the two-way tables to describe possible associations between two variables. Here's what I would like you thinking about today as we go through the lesson. How can you use the data from a two-way table to determine whether a relationship exists between two variables? Let's begin by reviewing some vocabulary. A two-way table displays two categories of data collected from the same source. So the data is you did or did not do your homework and you passed or failed your math test. We make a two-way table by using bivariate data collected from a survey. So at Central Middle School, students were asked two questions. Did you do your homework? Did you pass your math test? And we collected it into the cells of this two-way table. Bivariate data is data for two variables where each value of one variable is paired with the value of a other variable. So bivariate table, just like bicycle, means two. So students were asked two questions. Did you do your homework? Question one. Did you pass your math test? Question two. And then we connected the data for each. So the answer when it was did your homework had two different outcomes. You passed or you failed. And if you answered no, you didn't do your homework, you still had you either passed or you failed. So we have four different categories here because we have a two by two bivariate data table. And we wanna see if there's a connection between doing or not doing your homework and passing or failing your math test. So let's learn how to read a two-way table. We have a random sample of students at Central Middle School that were asked the two questions below. Did you complete your math homework? Did you pass your math test? A table was created to display the data collected. So again, a random sample, meaning it's not biased. There was a nice random sample of students that were asked these questions. So it wasn't, for example, students that love math and are on the math team. So random implies that it might have been done in, during school lunch or upon entering the building, but a random sampling of students were asked. So we're going to go and understand that this first cell here with 64 in it represents 64 students that did their homework and passed the math test. Then we're going to look at the next cell which is I did my homework and I failed my math test. So three students who did their homework failed the math test. Then let's move down to this cell right here, the number one, did no homework and passed the math test. So one student did no homework and passed the math test. And our fourth and final cell in the table right here, 32, we're gonna get from did no homework and failed the math test. So 32 students who did no homework failed the math test. So that's how we read this two-way table. Now let's interpret the two-way table. So I've added a column to total it. When we talk about these four cells from the bivariate data, we call those joint frequencies because they're joining the frequency that each of these questions happened. These are called marginal frequencies and it's how often they answered. So if we look right here, did homework 64 plus 3 is 67. So 67 students did homework that were surveyed. Over here to total this up, we're going to say did no homework. 1 plus 32 is 33. So of the students surveyed, 33 students said they did no homework. Now let's total about passing or failing. So students who pass the math test, 64 plus 1 is 65. So 65 students pass their math test. Failed the math test, 3 plus 32 is 35. So 35 students failed the math test. 
And then when we add this column, 67 plus 33 is 100. 65 plus 35 is also 100. So that means 100 students were surveyed. So this, these mar, um, marginal frequencies only represent one piece of data. So did homework, did no homework, passed the math test, failed the math test. And then our joint frequencies put two pieces of data together. All right, now we want to talk relative frequency or probab probable outcome from the data collected. So we're asked the question, based on the table, what percentage of students that did no homework passed the math test? So go, let's go right here of the students who did no homework. We want the percentage of no homework and pass the math test. So when we say relative frequency, that is a ratio. The number of outcomes that happened out of the probable outcomes or the number of surveyed. So we want to know number of kids that surveyed that did no homework. The number of kids surveyed that did no homework over here was one, right? One did no homework and passed the math test. And how many did no homework is out of 33. So let's do that again. Based on the table, what percentage of students that did no homework? Students that did no homework was 33. So that's our whole. What part of them passed the math test? one of these students who did no homework passed the math test. So the relative frequency is one out of 33. One divided by 33 on a calculator is 0 0.03 rounded to the nearest hundredth. Multiply by 100 to turn it into a percent and we get 3%. So we can conclude that 3% of students that did no homework passed the math test. All right. Let's get a ratio from a two-way table. We are asked, of the students represented in the table that did no homework, what is the ratio of students that passed the math test to students that failed the math test? So we're gonna say, out of doing no homework, we're gonna write a ratio of passed to failed. So once again, we're gonna go no homework and passed over no homework and failed. That's the ratio we're looking for. Let's write it as a fraction. You can write it as with the word two or with a colon. So we're going to no homework right up here and passed. No homework and passed is one. No homework and failed is 32. So the ratio of passed to failed that did no homework is one to 32. The ratio of students who passed to failed and did no homework is a ratio of 1 to 32. All right, let's now determine if there's a possible association. So typically when a data is collected from a survey, you're trying to prove something. So I would imagine that there's probably a math teacher out there who collected this data and wants to prove that there's value in completing your homework and that it's a direct correlation or connection to passing your math test. So here we have the math teacher believes that students that do homework are more likely to pass the math test. Does the data support the math teacher's belief and be able to explain your reasoning? So we're gonna look at the data here and we're talking about doing homework now and more likely to pass. So did homework and passed is 64 out of 100 students. So 64 over 100 is 64%. So 64% of students who did homework passed. Now three who did homework failed. So three out of 100 is 3% of students who did homework failed. So for me, this is enough to say that the math teacher is correct to believe students who do homework are more likely to pass the math test since 64% of students who did homework passed. You might also look at this and say, pass the math test, 64% passed and did homework, one out of 100 passed and did no homework. So you have a 1% chance of passing if you do no homework. Once again, that would also prove that 64% is high enough to believe that homework is leading to passing your math test. Now I would like you to practice using a bivariate data table. 
we have snow mountain data. At the Snow Mountain Resort, 250 people were surveyed. They were each asked the two questions below. How old are you? And do you prefer to ski or snowboard? And a table was created to display the data collected. So you can see we have two age groups and ski or snowboard. So let's go ahead. Here's your four part question. I'm gonna ask you to do each one individually and I'll explain them individually. So let's just start with part A. Based on the table, how many people prefer to snowboard? Show and explain how you got your answer. So go ahead and pause the video here. Answer just part A and come back and hit play or answer all four parts, B, C, D, and come back and hit play. Your choice. Good luck. Welcome back. Let's look at just part A. Based on the table, how many people prefer to snowboard? So I'm gonna go ahead and put in our marginal frequencies here. 46 plus 84 is 130. So that tells me 130 people who were surveyed are six to 40 years old. 98 plus 22 is 120. So 120 people that were surveyed are 41 years or older. 46 plus 98 is 144. So of the people surveyed, 144 of them like to ski. 84 plus 22 is 106. So 106 people surveyed snowboard. And then 130 plus 120 is 250. 144 plus 106 is also 250. We also knew this because it was given in the problem that 250 people were surveyed. So based on the table, how many people prefer to snowboard? So we're going to show or explain. So snowboard is 106 out of the 250. So we can say that based on the table, 106 people prefer to snowboard. All right, moving on to part B. Part B, based on the table, what percentage of people who prefer to snowboard are 41 years old or older and show or explain how you got your answer? So I'll give you a second here to pause. If you haven't done it already, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Based on the table, what percentage of people who prefer to snowboard are 41 years old or older? So we're gonna find a ratio, a part to a whole. Our whole is going to be people who prefer to snowboard. And then we wanna know how many of them are 41 and older. So we can say that 22 of the 106 people surveyed who prefer to snowboard are 41 years or older. To find the percentage, we're gonna divide. 22 divided by 106, rounded to the nearest hundredth is zero and 21 hundredths. Turning it into a percent, multiply by 100 or move the decimal two spaces to the right, and we get 21%. So from the data collected based on this table, about 21% of people that prefer to snowboard are 41 years or older. All right, here's part C. Of the people represented in the table that prefer to ski, what is the ratio of ages six to 40 to 41 and older? Show or explain how you got your answer. So if you haven't done this yet, pause now and then come back to check. Welcome back. So here we're talking of a ratio that prefer to ski six to 40 to 41 and older. So we're talking just skiing here. So six to 40 is 46, 41 and older is 98. So we have a ratio of 46 to 98 I would accept this as your math teacher, but let's simplify it. These are both divisible by two, 23 to 49. So I would accept this, but this is simplified. So of the people represented in the table that prefer to ski, 23 to 49 is the ratio of ages six to 40 to 41 and older. And our part D, our final part, the resort owners believe that people that are 41 and older prefer to ski. Does the data support their belief? Be able to explain your reasoning. So go ahead and pause if you need to and come back and hit play. Welcome back. So we're talking about these resort owners that collected this data to prove the point that people 41 and older prefer to ski. So let's look at that. 41 and older, 120 of these 250 people surveyed are 41 and older. Of that, we have, of the 120, 
98 preferred ski. 98 versus, out of 120, 22 of them who like to snowboard. 98 divided by 120 will give you 82%. 22 divided by 120 will be 18%. So 82% of the people 41 and older prefer to ski versus 18%. So the data does support the resort owner's belief that people 41 and older prefer to ski. And there you have it. That is two-way tables and how to read them, interpret them, calculate marginal frequencies, relative frequencies, and determine correlation or if there's a relationship that exists. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon. Don't forget to subscribe and have a great day.